crucial climate talks being hosted by the UK are now less than two months away. Today, the UK government minister in charge of the conference, Alok Sharma, has been meeting his counterparts in China. As the world's fastest growing economy and a major polluter too, China will be an important voice at the negotiating table. So what are the main challenges facing those trying to forge a new agreement at the talks in Glasgow? Our science editor, David Shukman, has this assessment. Year after year, the countries of the world have gathered for huge conferences on climate change. I've seen how a few have gone badly wrong, like in Copenhagen in 2009. Delegates walked out amid confusion and a lack of progress. Well, the first challenge is to make sure that there are steep and rapid cuts in emissions of the gases heating the planet, something that hasn't happened so far. Back in the early 90s, when climate negotiations started, about 35 billion tonnes of greenhouse gases were being emitted into the atmosphere every year. And since then, despite all the talking, those emissions have just kept climbing. Now, with all the plans and promises to cut them, they could fall to about 46 billion tonnes a year by 2030. But the science is incredibly clear that they need to come down far more than that if we're to have any chance of heading off the worst effects of higher temperatures, which is why this is such a crucial issue for the talks in Glasgow. Next, there's the highly sensitive question of financial help for the poorest and most vulnerable countries. Delivering this is long overdue. It's developing nations like the Philippines that are hardest hit by the violent weather made more frequent and intense by climate change. More than a decade ago, they were promised $100 billion a year. Vital, they say, to help them adapt to more dangerous conditions. We want to see adaptation finance flowing to climate vulnerable nations that bear the brunt of extreme weather events or climate change, but had no reason to cause it. A third major challenge for Glasgow is finalising the rules for measuring and trading carbon. Previous meetings failed to reach agreement. This matters because as countries try to cut their emissions, there needs to be a way of accounting for that. Likewise, if forests are left intact and the trees keep storing carbon, that has to be recorded so the carbon credits can be traded. It's vital to sort this out. Right now, for example, if a major company wanted to, say, invest in preserving standing forest in the Amazon, there's not yet any clarity on whether those credits that would be generated from that can be claimed by Brazil as well as by the company making that investment. So as Glasgow prepares for thousands of delegates, there's a lot at stake. Covid makes it all more difficult and there are just eight weeks to get ready. David Shukman, BBC News.